Good afternoon, our dear students. I am glad to see you here on my YouTube channel. Uh, and this lecture I am reading for students of third year for MM groups who had a second semester of third year. Uh, this is the first lecture according to your schedule. Uh, this semester, but we continue discipline that named propedeutics of internal medicine. Uh, and uh, if you remember, uh, previous uh, semester we discussed we discussed with you uh, a moments of uh, in general what is propedeutics, what is general inspection, inspection of cardiovascular system, main syndromes of cardiovascular system, and those semester we start we have. Um, uh, first lectures uh, in uh, syndromes uh, of uh, respiratory system diseases. And now we continue this submodule, Science and Symptom of Respiratory System Diseases. And topic of our today's lecture, syndromes from fluid accumulation in pleural cavity, or what we need pleuritis, to respiratory failure. We quickly uh, discuss all these syndromes. But before I start, uh, several uh, rules. First of all, uh, we all know that now in Ukraine it is a uh, uh, Ukraine-Russia war, and during to war and during to direct danger in Kharkiv, uh, we can't continue our studies offline, unfortunately. In the nearest time, I hope uh, that all of us will meet in our hospitals, in our departments, in our classrooms offline, and uh, will work in our disciplines uh, together. But uh, now it's still online. If during some time it will be uh, no changes in situation in Kharkiv, uh, it will be some outside practical offline courses. Now uh, university in process of decision of this problem. Uh, but till we don't have uh, decision, we, uh, we have some ways of decision these problems and uh, now university administration work about this problem. Uh, we continue our education online. Uh, previous semester I told you that propedeutics it is a practical discipline, it is a clinical discipline, but one moment uh, that uh, it is a general approach to the patient and uh, you really have in this discipline a lot of self-work. Uh, I explain something you hear on the lecture, I give you some theoretical materials. Uh, we can uh, give you on lectures and practice Practical classes, some moments of uh, techniques of objective examination, of uh, conversation with the patient, some laboratory instrumental studies. Uh, even we can show you something through the camera, uh, but you should should practice it obligatory individually. All manipulation like percussion, auscultation, palpation, please do it at home. You can have friends, you have relatives, you have your colleagues and medical students. Please put together and trying to practice some practical moments. Even uh, you can. Uh, uh, you can ask your teacher to control this all this manipulation through the camera online, uh, but before uh, you will learn different pathologies, different diseases, different syndromes, of course, it will be with real patients in the hospitals. It is obligatory for medical surgeons, but before it, you have to uh, do and you have to investigate a lot of norma, to palpate a lot of norma, to make percussion a lot of norma and to auscultate a lot of normal sounds. Uh, and just after it, starting to learn different pathology and maybe practice science in it. That's why even if education is online, for you it does not mean uh, that you can't do anything, just read something, that's all. It is intensive and very big self-work for you. That's why uh, in our discipline and in other disciplines of third course, uh, please work uh, tightly, uh, trying to uh, recognize, to understand everything you get on lectures, on practical classes, and 
trying to do it to apply it in your health i hope healthy relatives and friends uh, okay uh, uh, as always uh, under uh, this video you can leave comments uh, with your questions with some moments maybe what that was difficult during lecture for you i always glad for your feedback and i'm trying to answer always on these questions uh, optimally uh, you can do it on youtube but ideally it is uh, you can do it on our facebook page it is closed facebook page just for teachers and students and uh, there we have uh, most of our uh, discussions and usually I ask, uh, if you remember, I ask my students to leave a name and group uh, number of your group in comments under the video just for me, for controlling who listening me. Okay, let's start topic of our lecture. Uh, let's like a preamble, a remind to yourself uh, importance of respiratory system. That since our childhood we are aware that food, water and oxygen are basic necessities of life. We can't survive with, without them. The average person can live without food nearly three and uh, four weeks. We can't survive without water more than uh, three, five days. And oxygen is crucial to sustain life and three minutes is the maximum time where a person can stay alive without breathing. That's why you understand how the important are uh, to uh, to supply normal breathing and how the important uh, different diseases and syndromes in the respiratory system. And in today's lecture, I have several USML steps for you, just for yourself, controlling for yourself work. Uh, I will not ask, I will not ask you answers like an exam, but who are attentive during lecture for better um, understanding the material, uh, just for yourself, write on your note, or you can put it in comments, uh, just for yourself, answer on those questions. If in some uh, questions you don't know answer, uh, try to to return to them after the lecture because during the lecture I usually give all material. Okay, uh, test one. A 78 year old woman with a past medical history of heavy alcohol and tobacco use, esophageal cancer, and chronic pancreatitis presents to the emergency room with shortness of breath. Her blood pressure is 165 by 94. Heart rate is 118 beats per minute, respiratory rate 31 breathes per minute. Uh, saturation of oxygen is 78 on room ear. Uh, she then undergoes a thoracosynthesis for evaluation left-sided pleural effusion. Which of the following results is consistent with the pleural effusion secondary to esophageal perforation? Okay, try to analyze the question and try to answer. First option, it is fluid, uh, lactate dehydrogenase, uh, when uh, to serum lactate dehydrogenase ratio is from 0 0.1 to uh, 0 0.5 to 1. <coughs> Second option, fluid LDL of 15 international, 50 international units per liter. It's a decrease from normal, you see. Uh, third option, fluid protein serum uh, protein ratio is 0 0.5 to 1.4. Fourth, uh, uh, fluid um, protein of 10 grams per liter. Fifth, a gram stain is needed in order to evaluate this question. It is quite difficult. Uh, trying to find uh, trying to find answer during lecture or uh, maybe on some moments I don't have the time to stop on the lecture after working about pleuritis after working this team if you don't know now this answer or try to return it later when you prepare to the class of pleuritis okay and plan of our today's lecture we will I'm going to discuss dry and exudative pleuritis Pleural effusion, lung compression syndrome, obstructive sleep apnea, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and respiratory failure. It is main symptoms, uh, range of syndromes that I am going to discuss with you this lecture. Okay, dry and exudative pleuritis. 
sorry, <clears throat> it is third lecture for today, and for my throat I need to drink some something warm. Let's give definition. What is pleuritis? In general, or pleurisy. It is inflammation of the pleura that surrounds the lungs and line the chest cavity and can result in a sharp chest pain with breathing, shortness of breath, uh, cough, fever or weight loss depending on underlying cause. Ordinary distinguish the dry form or dry pleurisy and wet form or exudative pleuritis, pleurisy or pleuritis. It is the same. The wet form of pleuritis is accompanied by pleural effusion. The dry of pleuritis often precedes exudative of pleuritis. Uh, in most cases, dry pleuritis it is the first moment, first stage that after it results in exudative pleuritis, but it can be clinically separated. Okay, causes of dry and exudative pleuritis. The most common cause it is a viral infection. It can be different viruses. Other causes include pneumonia, mean, uh, it means uh, bacterial pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, autoimmune disorders, lung cancer following heart surgery, pancreatitis, chest trauma, and asbestosis. Occasionally, cause is remains unknown. Sometimes we can't find uh, any cause. We name the situation idiopathic pleuritis. Uh, symptoms and signs of pleuritis. The defining symptom of pleuritis is sudden, sharp, stabby, burning or dull pain in the right or left side of the chest during breathing, especially when one inhales and exhales. Uh, uh, breathing, uh, worsening, uh, pain feeling by the patient. Uh, pain feels worse with the deep breathing, coughing, sneezing or laughing. The pain may stay in one place or it may be spread to the shoulder or back. Sometimes pain becomes a fairly constant due age. Depending on its cause, pleuritic chest pain may be accompanied by other symptoms like dry cough, fever, chills, rapid shallow breathing, shortness of breath, tachycardia, sore throat followed by pain and swelling in the joints. Uh, okay, for putting diagnosis of dry and exudative pleuritis, uh, we are first of all, it like always, history taking. Uh, here we are uh, taking into account uh, a patient's symptoms, as usual, as in all other disorders. Auscultation and percussion of lungs can show us that when dry pleuritis, physician may hear noises like pleural friction characteristics. If you remember auscultation of lungs, you discuss with your teacher and practice uh, this noise. It is a pleural friction. It here like two. If you move your arms in this way, you can hear a so uh, you can hear a sound. Uh, this nearly the same with pleural friction. Uh, we usually use uh, in diagnostic of pleuritis chest X-ray. On chest X-ray, we can see pleural effusion. Laboratory findings: uh, We usually check inflammatory parameters like white blood cells, blood sedimentation rate, C-reactive protein uh, that generally increased during inflammation. Uh, okay, uh, first, uh, if uh, we suspect, we told that mostly it is viral or it can be other infection in all inf all infective causes, uh, we should identify the pathogen to find um, according to blood test, according to respiratory test uh, uh, and other tests, identify what pathogen uh, caused pleuritis. In case of autoimmune disease, uh, we can measure antibodies. Puncture of the pleural effusion and microscopic and chemical analysis of the liquid. If it present uh, exudation, uh, we can make function, take the piece, take the example of this liquid and analyze it for chemical structure and cell structure. Okay, pleural effusion. Pleural effusion, it is excess fluid that accumulates in pleural cavity. The fluid fills space that surrounds lungs. You know it from anatomy, 
help everybody. Uh, the fluid excess can impair breathing by limiting the expansion of the lungs more than 500 milliliters. Various kinds of pleural effusion depending on nature of the fluid and what causes its entry into the pleural space and hydrothorax. Uh, hydrothorax we name when it is serous fluid. Uh, next type it is hemothorax when it is bloody fluid, urinothorax when it is urine flu fluid, chelothorax when it is chyle fluid and pyothorax when we find pus in a fluid. Uh, transsudative cause of pleural infusion. If uh, we find in pleural cavity transsudate, it usually secondary to some other chronic disorders. What disorders it usually can be? Usually it is congestive heart failure, liver cirrhosis, hypoprotein amia, nephrotic syndrome, acute atelectasis, myxedema, peritoneal dialysis, obstructive uropathy and end-stage kidney failure. And you see picture uh, of chest X-ray. Uh, it is interesting picture that shows us uh, avoid or lenticular opacity in the right upper lung zone. Is intralobular effusion collected in the minor fissure? It is a quite um, rare situation. Usually effusion we see uh, in the lower part of lungs, but here intralobular effusion in the right lungs. Uh, such effusions are sometimes mistaken for tumors of the lung parenchyma. Intralobular infusions result with the treatment of the heart failure. Hence, they are sometimes called vanishing tumors, observed tumors, because usually uh, X-ray doctors make mistakes. Uh, and exudative cause. Uh, you uh, remember from physiology, part of physiology, difference between transudate and exudate. That exudate it is inflammatory fluid. Uh, it is uh, exudative pleuritis caused by some inflammation. What it can be? It can be due to pneumonia, due to cancer, pulmonary embolism, kidney disease, or inflammatory disease. And here you see a picture with a left lower lobe consolidation representing pneumonia. The meniscus in the left costophrenic angle indicated parapneumonic left pleural effusion. Uh, other less common causes of pleural effusion it is tuberculosis, autoimmune disease, bleeding due to chest trauma, chelothorax due to trauma, rare chest and abdominal infections. Asbestos pleural effusion due to exposure to asbestos. Uh, Mage's syndrome due to benign ovarian tumor, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. And in picture you see severe uh, right side hydrothorax. Symptoms of pleural effusion. Pleural effusion often cause no symptoms. Symptoms are more likely when a pleural effusion is moderate or large size or if inflammation is present. Symptoms of pleural effusion may include shortness of breath, chest pain, especially on breathing in deeply, uh, like in pleurisy or pleuritic pain, a fever and cough. Diagnosis. Pleural effusion is usually diagnosed on the basis of medical history and physical exam and confirmed by chest x-ray. Above the effusion, where a lung is compressed, there may be bronchial breathing and echophony. A large effusion uh, there may cause tracheal deviation away from the effusion. Once accumulated fluid is more than 300 milliliters, there are usually detectable clinical signs in patients, such as decreased movement of chest on the affected side stony dullness on percussion over the fluid, diminished breath sounds on the affected sides, decreased vocal resonance and fremitus. Through this is an inconsistent and unreliable sign and pleural friction rub. 
the most commonly used test for diagnosing of pleural effusion. It is chest X-ray. I show you several pictures of it. It is a computer tomography scan of the chest. The example you see, for example, uh, in the picture on right, it is CT scan chest showing massive left pleural effusion. You see that black colored, it is uh, fluid. It is not a tissue and more gray color uh, in another side. It is a tissue of lung. Moreover, we can use ultrasound of the chest, toracosynthesis, and pleural, pleural fluid analysis. It is the most usable test. Toracosynthesis. What is that? Pleural fluid is drawn out of the pleural space in a process called toracosynthesis, and it should be done in almost all patients who have pleural fluid that is more than 10 mm in thickness. Uh, more if fluid more than one centimeters according to test we should do uh, toracosynthesis take uh, the example of pleural fluid and analyze it uh, in toracosynthesis a needle is inserted through the back of the chest wall in the six seven or eight intracostal space on the mid axillary line into the pleural space one more time uh, let's imagine six, seven, or eight intracostal space on mid axillary line. We control the level Y several because um, it is according to severity of hydrothorax. Uh, according to we control it with ultrasound or just with percussion. You can do percussion and you hear where is the level of fluid, and in this place, you should inject, inject your needle. Uh, pleural fluid red cells counts are elevated in cases of bloody effusions after heart surgery or hematodex. Flu uh, pleural fluid amylase is elevated in case of uh, esophageal rupture, uh, pancreatic pleural effusion or cancer. Glucose is decreased with cancer, bacterial infection or rheumatoid pleuritis. Pleural fluid pH is low in empyema, usually less than 7.2, and may be low in cancer. Uh, what more in pleural fluid investigation? If cancer is suspected, pleural fluid is sent for cytology. If cytology is negative, either a toracoscopy or needle biopsy of the pleura may be performed. The fluid is also sent for gram staining and culture. And if suspicious for tuberculosis, examination for TB markers like adenosine deaminase, more than 45 is indicator interferon gamma, more than 140, or positive polymerase chain, uh, chain reaction for tuberculosis DNA. Once pleural effusion identified as exudative, additional evaluation is needed to determine the cause of excess fluid and pleural fluid is sampled for amylase, glucose, pH and cell count. It's understandable. We find to find cause of inflammation in exudate. Okay, comparison of transudate and exudate. A main cause, we told that for exudate it is inflammation increased vascular permeability, for transudate it can be increased hydrostatic pressure or decreased colloid osmotic pressure that uh, according to difference in pressure fluid goes to the pleural cavity. Appearance transudate is clear usually, exudate usually cloudy. Specific gravity uh, decreased in transudate and increased in exudate. Protein contact less than 2.5 in transudate, more than 2.9 in exudate. Uh, fluid uh, relation between fluid and serum protein less than 0.5 for transudate, more than 0.5 for exudate. Difference of albumin content with blood albumin more than 1.2 grams per deciliter for transudate and less than 1.2 for exudate. Fluid LDL upper limit for serum uh, less than 0 0.5 or less than uh, 2 parts from 3 uh, and for exudate uh, more than uh, 0 0.6 or 2 from 3. Cholesterol contact. 
content for transudated usually less than 45, for exudated usually more than 45. And one more test for you for today. A 54-year-old female presents to the emergency department complaining of shortness of breath. She does not speak English and her medical history is unknown. Her temperature is 100 by Fahrenheit, in Celsius it's uh, 37.8, blood pressure 130 by 85, uh, pulse is 105 and respir respirations are 24 per minute. Physical examination reveals bilateral rails and dialness to percussion and the lung basis at the walls of the left. Hepatus planomegaly is noted. A chest radiograph is shown on feature. Unfortunately, no feature here, but let's imagine. Uh, Toracosynthesis and hemo uh, hematologic analysis are performed. Which of the following results? Plural lactate dehydrogenase. Uh, 54, serum lactate dehydrogenase 82, serum, uh, proteins in serum total 7.0, proteins in plural fluid 3.8. Uh, if uh, we imagine that uh, on uh, x-ray picture we see exudate, plural exudate, which of the following conditions is most strongly associated with these findings? First, it is pulmonary embolism. Second, cirrhosis. Third, nephrotic syndrome. Fourth, protein losing entropy. And fifth, congestive heart failure. Next syndrome for today it is lung compression syndrome, or another name we name it atelectasis. Let's give definition and discuss types. Atelectasis is defined as the collapse of part of all of the lungs. Uh, when this occurs, for whatever reason, fresh air does not reach the thinnest of airways and oxygen and carbon dioxide can be exchanged. This, in turn, can lead to decreased levels of oxygen being delivered to the organs and tissues of the body. We name it hypoxia. Atelectasis may be acute, occurring suddenly over matters. Sorry, uh, a matter of minutes or chronic developing over the period of days to weeks. Atelectasis may be a result of a blocked airway or obstructive or pressure from outside of the lung. Uh, we name it non obstructive atelectasis. Uh, almost everyone who has surgery has some atelectasis from anesthesia. Atelectasis is particularly prominent after heart bypass surgery. Uh, mechanisms of atelectasis. First mechanism, uh, I told that it can be obstructive, non-obstructive. First, obstruction. Obstruction, blockage of an airway either from inside by a foreign body that is aspirated or mucus plug. Or, for example, it can be obstructed uh, from the outside by a lung cancer pressing on airway. Uh, second mechanism, it is compression. Compression of the airways in the lungs can be caused by fluid or air surrounding the lungs, uh, as in pleural effusion or pneumothorax, by enlargement or an aneurysm of the heart, by tumors such as cancer metastatic of the to the lungs, lymphomas or enlarged lymph nodes, or by abnormal distension which causes pressure on the lungs. Uh, third uh, mechanism, it is adhesion. When the surfactant is lacking, the lungs lose surface tension and can collapse. This is the cause of respiratory distress in newborns and can also occur in adults uh, with adult respiratory distress syndrome, smoke inhalation and kidney failure. Uh, fourth, hyperventilation. Failure to take deep breaths can result in collapse of part of the lungs during surgery, especially with general anesthesia. And when breathing is shallow due to pain, such as rib fractures. Uh, mucus plug. Uh, obstructive causes. Mucus plug after accumulation of mucus in airways often occurring during the after surgery. In children, people with cystic fibrosis and during severe asthma attack. 
Uh, foreign bodies common in children who has inherited an object such as peanut or small toy into their lungs. Here you see example of lower lobe atelectasis on the X-ray picture. Narrowing of the major airway from the disease, like chronic infection, including fungal infection, tuberculosis, and other diseases. Uh, it can be tumor in major airway, or it can be blood clot after significant bleeding into the lungs. It can be coughed out. Uh, Non-obstructive atelectasis. It can be due to injury. Or chest trauma. It can be due, uh, due to pleural effusion. It can be due to pneumonia, pneumothorax, scarring of lung tissue, or tumor. Uh, and on pictures, on picture you see first it is uh, pleural effusion. Yes, you see left side uh, 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 quite severe effusion. Second picture it is pneumothorax. You see that right lung is pressed to upper, it is atelectasis, and all other space it is uh, air. Yes, we name it pneumothorax. Uh, and third picture for you with atelectasis too. Uh, symptoms of atelectasis. Atelectasis may have few or no symptoms if it develops slowly or involves only a small portion of lungs. Conversely, if the condition affects large portion of the lungs or develops rapidly, symptoms may be dramatic and may even progress to shock. Uh, common symptoms include shortness of breath, the most common symptom. It can be coughing, often uh, described as hacking and is most often non-productive, meaning that no mucus is coughed up. Uh, in atelectasis uh, can be pleurisy, chest pain that is sharp and worsens with a deep breeze or coughing like pleuritic chest pain. And it can be fever at one time and it was thought that fever was a sign. Uh, on physical exam, atelectasis uh, findings may, be, may include quiet or absent breeze sound in uh, field, uh, mm -hmm. upper the field of atelectasis. On chest X-ray, the trachea and heart may be deviated towards the side of the chest where the lung is partially collapsed. The diaphragm may also be elevated on the side of collapse. Chest CT scan may further define an area of possible atelectasis and to look for other causes of obstruction, such as tumors or enlarged lymph nodes. Uh, bronchoscopy may be used to determine the cause of bronchial obstruction. Blood gases or oximetry may be done to determine how much atelectasis is interfering with the ability to get oxygen to your tissues. Other tests may be ordered depending upon the condition, for example, a blood work to evaluate kidney function. Here you see bronchoscopy. And on bronchoscopy it was found a peanut in the left main bronx in a child who breathed in this peanut. It is it lead to obstructive atelectasis. And one more uh, test for you. Test 3. A 37-year-old male brought to, um, brought to the emergency department following a motor vehicle accident. On arrival, respirations are shallow, blood pressure is 80 by 60 mm hydrargon, pulse is 122 per minute, respiratory rate 29 per minute. Physical examination demonstrates absent brain sounds on the patient's left side. Chest radiograph uh, you see on feature here, present uh, picture. Which of the following is most appropriate next step in management? First, it is echocardiography, second, needle to uh, toracostomy of the left second intracostal space, third, chest tube replacement in the left uh, fourth intracostal space, fourth, it is transfusion of packed red blood cells, and fifth, it is endotracheal intubation. Okay, next syndrome for today it is obstructive sleep apnea. Let's discuss definition and causes. Obstructive sleep apnea is caused by obstruction of upper airway. 
uh, obstructive sleep apnea is characterized by repetitive pauses or apneas in breathing during sleep, which typically lasts from 20 to uh, 40 seconds despite of effort to breathe. Uh, it's usually associated with redu reduction in blood oxygen saturation. Uh, obstructive sleep apnea is commonly accompanied with snoring. Uh, maybe you hear people who uh, snore very loudly and very intensive during sleeping. They uh, often hear uh, some stopping in breathing. Uh, this, uh, this is obstructive sleep apnea. The main causes of it are older age, temporary of permanent brain injury, decreased muscle tone, excess of tissue around the airways common with obese patients, something physical in the throat or mouth uh, jaw shape. Symptoms of uh, obstructive sleep apnea. It is excessive daytime sleepiness, loud snoring, episode of breathing cessation in sleep, Abrupt awakenings by shortness of breath, awakening with a dry mouth or sore throat. Awakening with a chest pain, morning headache, difficulty concentration during the day, experiencing mood changes, difficulty staying asleep and high blood pressure. Diagnosis of obstructing sleep apnea. Uh, usually we use for uh, conforming this syndrome nocturnal polysomnography. It is a method that records brain wave changes, eye movements, leg movements, blood oxygen levels, muscle tone, heart rates and respiration during sleep. Moreover, we usually check oximetry in such patients and a poor sleepiness scale to measure the patient's level of daytime sleepiness. Three ratings of uh, obstructive sleep apnea. It can be mild when it is from 5 to 14 episodes of apnea uh, or hypopnea per hour. Moderate from 15 to 30 episodes apnea or hypopnea per hour. And severe over 30 episodes of apnea or hypopnea per hour. Uh, and uh, a little bit more about nocturnal polysomnography. A 30-second approach of polysomnographic recording is in the 13 channels muscular tension, eye movements, bioelectrical brain functions, uh, heart rate, breathing, uh, snoring, body position and oxygen saturations are recorded and all of them are recorded for you in such line. That a little bit uh, looks like ACG. During the first 10 seconds an obstructive sleep apnea cessation of breathing is clearly visible as a flat line in a flow channel. Uh, and uh, it is questionnaire for sleep uh, apnea that we usually use uh, to clinically confirm patient uh, with obstructive sleep apnea. You can save it for yourself. And one more step for today for you. Step 4. A 63-year-old man presents a physician uh, complaining of excessive daytime sleepiness. This problem has worsened slowly over the past few years, but is now interfering with his ability to play with his grandchildren. He worked previously as an overnight train conductor, but he has been retired for past three years. His wife, wife noticed that he often snores loudly during sleep. He has also been experiencing headaches in the morning and endures at a depressed mood. His physical exam is most notable for his largely body habitus, BMI of 34. What is the best description of the underlying mechanism of this patient's excessive daytime sleepiness? First option, insufficient sleep duration. Second, circadian rhythm sleep wake disorder. Third, poor uh, oropharyngeal tone. Fourth, deficiency of the neuropeptide orexin A and orexin B and fifth psychiatric disorders. Please attentively try to answer. Next syndrome, acute respiratory distress syndrome. 
Acute respiratory distress uh, or respiratory distress syndrome or acute lung injury, adult respiratory distress syndrome or shock lung, it all the same terms. It is a severe life-treating medical condition that characterized by widespread inflammation in the lungs. Common causes of acute respiratory distress syndrome include sepsis, pneumonia, trauma, multiple blood transfusions, barbiciosis, lung contusion, aspiration of stomach contents, and drug abuse or overdose. Other causes uh, of distress syndrome include burns, pancreatitis, a near drawing and inhalation of chemical irritants such as smoke, phosgene or chlorine gas. For some cases, burns are linked to large volumes of fluid used during post-trauma resuscitation. This syndrome has a high mortality between 20 and 50 percent. Mechanisms of acute respiratory distress syndrome. It is a pathology of microscopic air sacs of the lungs alveoli that lead to decreased exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide or gas exchange. Uh, uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome associated with several pathological changes, the release of inflammatory chemicals, breakdown of cells lining in the lungs and blood vessels, surfactant loss leading to increased surface tension in the lungs, fluid accommodation in the lung and excessive fibrous connective tissue formation in alveoli and bronchi. Signs and symptoms of this syndrome. The signs and symptoms of acute respiratory distress syndrome begin within 72 hours of the initial insult or injury to the lung and may include severe shortness of breath, fast, fast breathing, cough, and low oxygen level in the blood. Chest X-ray frequently demonstrates a generalized infiltrates or opacities in both lungs, which represent fluid accumulation in the lungs. Other signs and symptoms may be associated with underlying disease process like low blood pressure and fever and other problems. Diagnosis of acute respiratory distress syndrome. For it, we use Berlin criteria proposed by European Society of Intensive Care Medicine, endorsed by American Thoracic Surgery Society of Crit uh, Critical Care Medicine. Uh, what the Berlin criteria? It is acute onset. It is bilateral infiltrates on chest radiograph sparing costophrenic angels. Uh, it is pulmonary atrial wedge pressure less than 18 mm hydrargium if this information is available. If unavailable, uh, then lack of clinical evidence of left atrial hypertension. If uh, uh, relation uh, between PaO2 and FiO2 less than 300 mm hydrargium, the difference, acute lung injury is considered to be present. Uh, if this relation less than 200, acute respiratory distress syndrome is considered to be present. And one more test for you. A uh, 48-year-old female suffers uh, a traumatic brain injury while skiing in a remote area. Upon her arrival on the uh, emergency room, she is severely hypoxemic and non-responsive to oxygen therapy. She is started on me uh, mechanical ventilator on two days later upper aus uh, upon auscultation. Uh, you note late inspiratory crackles. Which of the following is most likely normal in this patient? Uh, first, it is type 1 pneumocytes. Second, type 2 pneumocytes. Third, chest X-ray. Fourth, alveolar arterial gradient. And fifth, left arterial pressure. Quite difficult question, but try to work with this information. Uh, okay, next syndrome for today, it is respiratory failure. Let's give definition. Respiratory failure occurs when the respiratory system uh, fails in oxygenation or carbon dioxide elimination. It may be acute when develops over minutes to hours and chronic when develops uh, over several weeks, months.
Clinical markers include polycythemia and core pulmonale. Types of respiratory failure. First type, it is hypoxemic, when uh, pressure of oxygen is less than 60 mm hydrargon within a normal or low uh, pressure of carbon dioxide. It is caused by ventilation, perfusion, uh, perfusion mismatch. Second type, it is hypercapnic. When pressure of carbon dioxide is more than 50 mm hydrargium and indicates inadequate alveolar ventilation. Causes Type 1 uh, or, or hypoxemic, it is uh, most often disorders like COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It is pneumonia, pulmonary edema, pulmonary fibrosis, asthma, pneumothorax, and pulmonary embolism. Type 2 or hypercapnic are uh, most often caused by pulmonary hypertension, cyanotic congenital heart disease, bronchoectasis, acute respiratory distress syndrome, kyphoscoliosis, and obesity. Okay. Uh, more causes. Uh, it is severe asthma for type 1 drug overdose, posing myasthenia gravis. Uh, polyneuropathy, polymyelitis, mus uh, muscle disorders, head injuries, and for type 2. Additionally, it can be neck injuries, obesity, pulmonary edema, adult respiratory distress syndrome, and hypothyroidism. Uh, conditions that affect the nerves and muscles that control breathing examples include muscular dystrophy, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, and stroke. Uh, moreover, it can be damage of the tissues and trip around the lungs that can't breathe uh, in normal way. Problems with the spine such as scoliosis, a curve in the spine. Drug and alcohol overdose and overdose affects the area of the brain that controls breathing. Lung diseases and conditions such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, pulmonary embolism, and cystic fibrosis. Acute lung injuries like inhaling harmful fumes or smoke. Signs and symptoms of respiratory failure. It is paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. It is possible orthopnea. Who don't remember what is it uh, obligatory prepare these terms on the practical classes it is very important for this topic it can be pulmonary edema cyanosis confusion and reduced consciousness localized pulmonary findings tachycardia and cardiac arrhythmias and here you see a very uh, interesting picture of uh, it is a, a macro uh, spacement of heart of uh, person with uh, pulmonary hypertension and hypertensive heart and you see how a hypertrophied uh, right part of heart it what we name uh, core pulmonale uh, another signs and symptoms it can be hypoxemia acidosis core pulmonale what i show you here that usually uh, associated with pulmonary hypertension, right ventricular failure, hepatomegaly, and peripheral edema. Diagnostic tests for respiratory failure. It is pulmonary function tests, spirometry, arterial blast, and gas test, etc. Uh, we usually use chest X-ray. We, uh, we uh, do for such patients full blood count for checking for anemia contributes to hypoxia, polycythemia contributes to chronic hypoxemic respiratory failure. Renal and liver function tests may provide clues to etiology or identify complications associated with respiratory failure. Serum creatine kinase and troponin 1. We use it to help exclude recent myocardial infarction. Thyroid function test uh, to exclude hypothyroid chronic hypercapnic respiratory failure. Uh, we always do for such patients echocardiography or heart ultrasound uh, for checking uh, for cardiac cause of acute respiratory failure. And we do an ACG for cardiovascular cause dysrhythmias resulting from severe hypoxemia or acidosis. 
Moreover, we can do right heart catheterization if there is uncertainty about cardiac function and pulmonary capillary wage pressure to distinguish cardiogenic form from non-cardiogenic form. And here you see uh, analyzation of arterial blood gas test. More information about uh, these gases. Uh, I told you, first of all, on one of previous lectures about pulmonary hypertension. It was a lot about arterial blood gases. Uh, who don't remember, please return here one more time. Uh, anal anal analytic approach of acid-based disorders, including respiratory failure, the algorithm. Uh, here on this slide, you can stop it and work with it in your preparation to practical class. Uh, and uh, you see here an uh, approach to the patient with hypoxemia. Uh, uh, in algorithm 2, yes, according to is increased uh, pressure of carbon dioxide, it according to it, uh, according to level of this pressure, is it hyperventilation, is it pressure of oxygen increased, decreased, and by algorithm we can diagnose uh, different problem and even their etiology. And uh, for the ending of our lecture, one more test, test 6 for this topic. A 50-year-old Caucasian male presents to the emergency department uh, complaining of shortness of breath and uh, tensional weight loss over the past several months. On physical exam, the patient appears quite thin and breathes through a pursed lips. Breeze sounds are decreased in all lung fields. Which of the following findings is expected on spirometry? First option, uh, uh, it is increased uh, first uh, expiration volume in first second. Who don't remember, please return to uh, one of previous lectures we discussed spirometry. Second option, decreased uh, relation between uh, forced uh, expiration volume first second and uh, it relation to forced vital capacity third it is decreased TLS uh, fourth normal uh, FF1 but increase FVC and five normal lung values uh, okay, who don't remember this abbreviation, one more time uh, remind for yourself a spirometry it is important for this topic uh, for today, uh, for this topic, that's all. It was just the main things. Uh, if some part uh, will be difficult for you from this topic, if you have question from the topic of the lecture or any other topic, I waiting for you in comments under the video on YouTube or on our Facebook page where I'm going to place this lecture. Uh, and I remind you one more time, please, everyone who listening my lecture, please leave your name and number of group. I remind that this lecture I prepare from MM group uh, of third course, uh, second semester. Uh, leave your name and groups for my uh, some small controlling for listening lecture. For today, that's all. See you in two weeks on new lecture. And now, goodbye.